Okay, First Chronicles 12, more names. Now these are they that came to David to Ziglag. Ziglag is where God put David when Saul was put in battle, far from each other. And what we see here in the beginning of chapter 12, David is not king. And I believe that God separated David from Saul to say, there is no way that Saul was killed by David. So to Ziglag, where he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the, the son of Kish. You know, he's staying away from Saul. He's been trying to kill him. And they were among the mighty men, helpers. That's the first time that word shows up, of war. And we're going to look at another group of men, warriors, army of the men of David. We saw his his mighty men, chapter 10, 12, 11, excuse me. We're going to look at the armies more. In verse 2, they were armed with bows. Okay. And could use both the right hand and the left hand in hurling. That's the only place that word shows up. Stones and shooting. That's the first time that word shows up. And it only shows up shooting. In Amos chapter 7, verse 1. It's only two places you find shooting. So the Bible has it twice. There was a shooting today in Orlando. There was a shooting in the school. There was a shooting here. i got to go to the shooting range. It's funny how the Bible only uses it twice. And the shooting in the Bible is referenced to stones, not bullets. So here is men that are able to fight. They're not only fighters, but they can use their right and they can use their left hand. And shooting arrows and bows and stones and and right hand and left hand hurling stones and shooting here. Uh, it looks like they could do it at the same time. They got the sling going and they got the bow. That's what it looks like to me. Even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. Now Benjamin, those warriors are known for the left hand and the right hand. But do you remember? And it says right there, so it wouldn't be a question, but Saul was of Benjamin. And we're going to see it again. Benjaminites of Saul's family, of the children of Benjamin of Jacob, came to David of Judah. We want to join you, David. So Saul had shown his wickedness. He's shown his rebellion against God. And David has lived right. And the people are saying, David, you're the right one. Verse 3. The chief of these men, we're looking at Ahazer, then Joash, the sons of Shema, the Gidevithite, and Jezreel, Pelet, the sons of Amethyst, and I hate when they put the name under the next column, Barakta, and Jehu, the Onathite, and Ishmaha, the Gibbonite, and a mighty man among 30. Now, I don't know if that's the 30 we learned in chapter 11, but among the 30 and over the 30. Uh, he's not in charge of the ones in chapter uh, 11. So with what we've learned in chapter 11, there are, is another group of mighty men of David. At least right now, two groups of, of the mighty men of David. And you know who gave David the war, the victory David proclaimed? God. And Jeremiah, and Jezio, and Jonathan, and Josbab, and the Githerite, Elzizai, and Jeremoth, and Beliah, and Shemaniah, and Shephoth, and the Harthalite, Okina, and Jesha, and Azrael, and Josir, and Jashabim, and the Korhite, and Jola, and Zebla, and the sons of Joram of Geber. The Gadites, that's another son of Jacob, another one of the tribes of the children of Israel. We just seen Benjamin, now we see the Gadites. They separated themselves onto David. So, King Saul is king. We're leaving you and we're going to join David. Unto the hold of the wilderness, that's a lot of times where David was. David wasn't in Jerusalem. David wasn't in the castle. He's out in the valleys. He's out in the wilderness. He's out wherever he can hide from Saul. 
men of might. So mighty men, men of might, and men of war fit for battle. So there they are. They're the fatigue. They're the, they're the ones of strength. That could handle so shield and buckler. Whose faces were like the faces of lion. And we saw this in the last chapter. Uh, verse 22, chapter 11. At the end of the verse, says, slew, oh no, that's, uh, at the, close to the end of the verse, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. These men, they're, they're so rugged, they're so wilderness, and you would see this in mountain men. You would see this in survival men. You would see this in the, the uh, Native American. Their face is just, ugh. I had a life to live. I had hardness. I had hard time. I had to chop my own wood. I had to defend. I had to fight. I had to kill. I had to go get my my own food. I had to plow my own fields. I, it's just a face of life. You don't see many of those faces today. And they were, as, uh, by the way, uh, yeah, they were as swift as rose, kind of deer. That's the first time that word shows up, rose, upon the mountains. And if you've ever seen videos of these deer, they just hop from mountain to mountain to mountain. I don't know how they do it. But these guys could do that. Today, you would have the imitation of rock climbing. Or you have this board with these things that you climb all the way up with, with a uh, bungee cord attached to you. Those men didn't have bungee cords. They were quick. And here we go. Ezer the first. Obadiah the second. Elab the third. Mishumen the fourth. Jeremiah the fifth. That's not the prophet Jeremiah. Atai the sixth. Elil the seventh. Johan the eighth. Elzbad the ninth. Jeremiah the tenth. Maccabani the eleventh. These were the sons of Gad. Captain of the host. One of the least was over a hundred. And the greater over a thousand. So the captain who had the least amount of troops had a hundred men over him. The one that had the greatest amount had a thousand men with him. It was a lot of men. These are they that went over Jordan, that's the river, in the first month. When it had overthrown, that's the first time that word shows up, overthrown. And it shows up, this also gives you a date the first month. Because there are very places in the Bible where it mentions this Jordan overflowing its banks. Here's one of the places that says the first month. And they say about our April. O overflowed all its banks and they put to flight all them of the valleys. Both to the east and to the west. And they're just scattering people out. Get out of here. You don't belong here. Time to go. Move out. They would cross this mighty Jordan. So, here we go, battles. Verse 16. And there came of the children of Benjamin, back to Benjamin again, and Judah, to the hold unto David. They came to David, he's in the hold. And David went out to meet them, and answered them. He answered and said unto them, now remember, this is the children of Benjamin, they're of Saul, Saul's of Benjamin, if you come peacefully unto me and help me, my heart shall be knit unto you. All right, now he's looking at these, these people of Benjamin saying, are you for me or are you for Saul? Okay, if you're here for me, we're going to have a bond. We're going to get, we're going to come together as a family unit, as men of battle. But if you come to betray me, that's the first time that word shows up, betray. That's kind of funny because that word shows up. Isn't that the, the word that's used about uh, Judas and Jesus? And it shows up with David, David. You come to betray me to my enemies. Well, who's David's enemy? Saul. Yeah, he's fighting the Philistines and that could be an enemy. But the number one enemy of David is King Saul trying to kill him. Seeing there is no wrong in my hands. I haven't done anything wrong. Why does this guy keep chasing me? The God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 tribes, 
look thereon and rebuke it. So if you're here to deceive me, to betray me, may God look upon you and reward you accordingly. Then the spirit came upon Amasai, who was the chief of the captains. So he's over the captains. And he said, thine are we, David. All these people here with us, we're yours. We don't come to betray you. We're here for you. And on thy side, the son of Jesse. Well, that's a bold statement of Benjamin when they got a king who was on Benjamin. We acknowledge you, David, of Jesse, of Judah, that you're going to be the king. Peace, peace be unto thee. And peace be to thy helpers. Notice the word help keeps showing up. For thy God helpeth, that's the first time that word shows up, helpeth thee. So they're coming in the name of God, they're coming in the name of Jehovah. David, we're here to defend you, we're here to help you. Whatever God has for us. Then David received them and made them captains of the band. And you thought a band was a bunch of musicians. A band in the Bible is military band. The fight. So he inquires them into his army. And there fell some of Manasseh to David. Not all of Manasseh. Some. That's of the, the children of Joseph in Egypt. They're part of the 12 tribes. And they're coming to David. When he came to the Philistines against Saul to battle. But they helped them not. For the lords of Philistines... Upon advisement, that's the first time that word shows up, sent him away saying, he will, fa he will fall to his master, Saul, to the jeopardy of our heads. All right, so we are running back into the scriptures of 1 Samuel, around 27 and 28. Wherever David comes up, the Philistines are going to battle Saul. They're going to fight Israel. David comes up to the king and says, hey, here we are. Here's my troop. Here's my men. We're, we're listening to them right now. Here we are. And the problem is, well, let's go 1 Samuel 29. Let's go there. Best way to read it. 1 Samuel 29. And we'll start, oh, 1. 29-1. One. This is where we are at Chronicles. First, uh, First Samuel twenty nine one. Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies to Aphek, and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. And the lords of Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands. So they got massive troops, but David and his men passed on in the rearward word in the rearward with Achish. Now that. David and his men. That's the ones we just read about. Then said the princes of the Philistines. This is where we're at right now. What do these Hebrews here? David and his men. And Achish said unto the princes of the Philistines. Is not this David. The servant of Saul. The king of Israel. Which has been with me these days. And these years. And I have found no fault in him. Since he fell unto me unto this day. Now Achish is the king. He's like. David is with us. He's not of the Hebrews. He's been loyal to me. He's my friend. And the princes of Philistines were wroth with him, Achish. And the princes of Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return, David, that he may go again to his place, which thou appointed him, him. And let him not go down with us to battle, lest the battle in the adversary to us. For wherewith should he reconcile himself with his master, Saul, should it not be with the heads of these men? Is not this David whom they sang one to another in dances and sing, saying, Saul slew his thousands and David his ten thousands? Uh, Achish, he's our enemy. And Achish called David and said unto him, Surely as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright in thy going out and thy coming in with me, and the host is good in my sight, your men. For I have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me. And this day, nevertheless, the Lord's favor thee not. All right, David, you got to go. 
All right. Now, when we pick up these men, where do these men that we're reading in Chronicles now? Chapter 30, verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day. And that's where, he, that's where the families are taken, the wives are taken, the children are taken, the animals are taken. David has to go fight these men. He's completely out of the realm of Saul, and Saul will die in chapter 31, 1 Samuel. So where we are in Chronicles, we're in 1 Samuel 29, 1 Samuel 30, and we're coming to 1 Samuel 31. That Ziglag, there it is. And David gets all these men at Ziglag. Just before Saul dies. So back to 1 Chronicles 12. And verse 19. And fell some Manasseh to David when he was come from the Philistines against Saul to battle. There's what we just read. He gathered himself with the Philistines to go against David. I mean, Saul, excuse me. That's what we read. And the Philistines, for the Lord of the Philistines upon advisement, uh, who's this guy? He sent him away, saying he will fall to his master Saul. We read that. To the jeopardy of our head. He's going to go back to Saul and then we're going to die. Didn't, he, didn't they kill his ten thousands? And as he went to Ziglag, there fell to him Manasseh, Anna, and that's where we left off, and Jazbad, and Jadil, and Michael, and Jazabad, and Elihu, and Ziltai, captains of thousands that were of Manasseh. So David flees away from the Philistines, away from Israel, and God sending all these men to him. One chapter before Saul dies. What a great inspiration. He's been churned around. He's been churned away by Saul. He's been churned away by the Philistines. He's a man all by himself. He goes to Ziglag. There's been a battle. His family, his animals, they're gone. His troops are against him. And he gets that battle. He gets his wives back. He gets his animals back. And these men start showing up. Hi, David. We're for you. We're here for you. And 21, and they helped David against the band of the rovers. That's the only time that word shows up. Those are the men that attacked his families and their families in Ziglag. For they were all mighty men of valor and were captains of the host. For at that time, day by day, there came to David to help him. Until it was a great host like the host of God, the angels. It says that. Every day, here comes a group of men to die, David. We want to join you. Wow, okay. Next day. Hi, David. We're here to... <laughs> okay. Next day. Hi, David. And the Bible likens the host of David like all the angels. You can't count them. Now, how is it that David can take care of all these men that are just innumerable, and America can't take care of the amount of people that... We do have a number of how many men are in the military. We have a census of our military, and we can't take care of it, and David's taking care of them. Must be that David was on God's side, and the men were on God's side. And God said, okay, I'll take care of you guys. I love you. You love me. You realize David could fought all the battles without these men? Did he not go against Goliath with, with one stone? Man, with God, he could... But all these men want to follow a leader. And this leader is not Saul who is wickedness and going after the witch of Endor. This is a man that goes after God. Verse 23. And these are the numbers of the band's army that were ready armed to war and came to David to Hebron. This is where they make him king. And turned the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. So these mass numbers we're going to read about, all these people were for David's our king. And it's by God. By God. The children of Judah, that's the kingly line that David's from, that bear shield and spear were 6,800 ready armed to war. That's not counting the women and children. That's not counting the lame. And those are not ready for war. The children of Simeon, mighty men of valor for the war, 7,100. 
of the children of Levi. They weren't a tribe. The Levi step up to David and say, we're ready to battle. 4,600. If Jehoiada was the leader, ooh, that's the first time that word shows up. He's not the high priest. Abiathar is the high priest. He's just a leader. So see, when you say we come across it, when it says the chief or the ruler of the Levite, it doesn't mean the high priest of the Aaronites. That's the first time that shows up, and it only shows up again in chapter 27, verse 17. The Aaronites. That's the priest. All priests are of Aaron and of Levi, but not all Levites were the priests. And with him were 3,700. All right, Levi had 4,000. Along with Jehoiada, he had an extra 3,700 men. They're all Levites. And Zadok, a young man mighty of valor, and of his father's house, 20 and two captains. This man, his house, his father's house. We have captains in our, in our blood. It doesn't even say what tribe he was of. It just, here's Zadok, 22 captains. Not this one, no. Remember, Zadok is one of those names there. You know, there's it's, there's a lot of Zadok. Of the children of Benjamin, that's three times mentioned. Do you realize the children of Benjamin had it with, with Saul? The children of Benjamin, the kindred of Saul. This is Saul's family. This is not just the children of Benjamin of Jacob and Rachel. These are the ones that are related to King Saul. Here they are. Saul's own house said, we're going to go to David. <laughs> you're out of luck. You know, when your own family gets up and, and says, you know, you're on your own, buddy. The kindred of Saul, 3,000. For hitherto the greatest part of them had kept the ward of the house of Saul. They were in charge of the wards, the rooms. The, the... And you know what they said? See you later. We're going to go out in the wilderness. We're going to go to Ziglag. We're going to go out in the valley. And then we're going to go make David the king. We're out of here. The children of Ephraim, 20,800. Mighty men of valor. Famous. <laughs> There's the word famous. Throughout the house of their fathers. We're the children of Ephraim. The one of David's men. Let me tell you about David's men of us. And the half tribe of Manasseh, 18,000. Those the tribes of Israel, which were expressed by name to come and make David king. So their name is given, though it's not recorded here. They came for the purpose. David, you're going to be king. Anybody going to fight that? Well, there was a fight. Ishbanish was made king by uh, Abner. And David stayed in Hebron. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of time, of the times. Oh. Notice it didn't say soothsayer. Notice it didn't say magic. Notice it didn't say sorcery. They had the thing of prophecy. They had the thing, it's, it's this season. It's this time of month. You would plant this time. You would, hey, you know, this is the time that we need to do something. To know what Israel ought to do. That was given to Issachar. What do we do? The heads of them, of the children of Issachar, were 200. So Issachar would be in charge of maybe planning. Issachar, what do we plant this time of uh, uh, this season? Well, let's see, going by what it is, this is, the, this is what you would plant. Issachar, would this be the time that David would be made king? Oh, yeah. And all their brethren, which were at their commandment. So Issachar would command his own children, his own people. Of Zebulun, such as went forth to battle. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Here, our, we're warriors, we're battle. Give us no war. Expert, there's the first time that word shows up. Now, what's an expert in war? If you want to know how to fight, you went over to Zebulun. 
You want to know what time to do something? He went over to Issachar. With all instruments of war, you name it, Zeppelin had it. Barrels, arrows, slingshot, all kinds of mechanics. They had it. We've got it. 50,000, which could keep rank. We're going to look at something a little bit later now, but keep notice that keep rank. They stayed in uniform possession when they went into fight. And they were not double heart. They did not talk or they did not make fun of. They did not harass David. They stayed upon David. They stayed upon the Lord. That's what double heart means. Knows heart. With the heart man believes on the righteousness. With the heart they serve God and they serve David. And they were the men of war. Ooh, don't mess with David. Now, Nathatali, a thousand captains. Ooh, it sounds like a Baptist church with deacons. And with them, with shield and spear, 30 and 7,000. They held their own those shields and they had the spears. There were some that had bows and arrows. And of the Danites, expert in war, they knew what they're doing, 20 and 8,600. And of Asher, such as went forth to battle, expert in war. Look at Israel. In the realm of God with a, a, a king debate, who loves the Lord and has his heart after God, these men, you don't mess with Israel. What happened to Israel over the years? What happened to their kings that have fallen? That Babylon came and took over. They couldn't do nothing. They fell out of the love of God. They disobeyed. They rebelled against God. They turned to gods. And they lost their strength. The pastor, such a went forth to bow, expert in war 40 times. David loved the Lord. And the other side of the Jordan, the Reubenites, and the Gadites, they're the ones that say, hey, we'll take this land. We don't want that land. We'll take this land. And the half-tribe of Manasseh, with all manner of instruments of war for battle. They had instruments of war for battle. 120,000. All these men that we just read about, men of war, that could keep rank. You know that describes us? Joel chapter 2, verse 7. The Christians, when we come back with Jesus Christ, Joel chapter 2, verse 7. And I don't know what your Bible says about Joel chapter 2, but you can erase whatever it says because this is whatever, not nonsense. This is Jesus Christ coming back, and the warriors that we're going to look at chapter 2, verse 7. We're not going to read the whole thing, but the warriors, that's the church behind Jesus Christ at the advent. And what's the Bible say about us upon horses? Joel chapter 2 verse 7. This is me. I'm a Christian. They shall run like mighty men. Isn't that what we just read? So guess what we just read a type of in 1 Chronicles 12. David's a type of Christ, right? All these men are type of Christians coming back. What are you going to do when a church says, Oh, thou shalt not kill? What are, you, what are we going to be doing when Christ, that, that word comes out of his mouth? Dead. Burn up. And we're not finished. Thou shalt run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Men of Chapter 11. Right? Yeah. No, chapter 12, excuse me. First Chronicles 12. They shall march every one on his way. They shall not break their ranks. We saw that in two places in Chronicles 12. Now, you want a biblical definition? You know what rank is. You've seen military men march in parades. That rank. We're not going to fall out of ranks. We're not going to get out of where we don't belong. We've been doing it as our Christian walk. We go in ways that we're not supposed to. But when we come back with Jesus Christ, we're not ever going to go our own way again. Never. If we're if we if we if I am in the eighth row, the sixth horse, that's where I'm going to stay. 
Now, what about that rank that people have a problem with? You say, do people have a problem? Genesis 41.5. Genesis 41.5. What are you talking about? I'll give you a biblical definition that people have a hard time with. Really? Yes. Genesis 41, verse 5. Though we have a dictionary, but let's look at Scripture Scripture. And he slept and dreamed the second time. He bowed seven ears of corn, came up with one stalk, rank and good. Well, what did we just read about? The plants were in order. They were orderly. You ever see a cornfield? We And then look at verse 22 of the same chapter 41. I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. People have problems with that. There's nothing wrong with that. That stalk was full, and they were all orderly. As we will be when we come back with Jesus Christ, as with David's men. So when we read 1 Chronicles chapter 12, we're reading about David. Is he king yet? No. Is he going to be king? Yes. And who's he going to bring? Everyone that has joined him in this book. And there are people who have specifically said, David, we come to make you king. Well, guess what I'm going to do when I come back with Jesus? I am going to help set him up king upon David's throne in Jerusalem for all the Jews to be the king of the Jews. King of the kings and Lord of lords. I will be behind him all the way. There it is. In 1 Chronicles 12, 38. And these men of war. I guess we're going to be a war. That could keep rank. Came with a perfect heart to Hebron. I am going to have a perfect heart one day. I'm going to have a new body. Read Joel chapter 2 on your own sometime. But we're going to take Jesus to Jerusalem. To make David king over all Israel. Isn't that great? There's Jesus and there's the church all the way. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. The Israelites that will be left after the great tribulation period, at that seven year, when Christ comes and gets them, all of them and all the warriors of David and the entire nation of Israel that's left, it will be for one purpose. Jesus Christ, you are the king. Here is the throne. Sit down. Won't that be a glorious day? And they, and there, uh, and there they were with David three days, eating and drinking. For the brethren had been prepared for them. So it would be a feast in the millennium. Notice that three days. I don't know what that is. I don't know why three days. Moreover, they that were nigh then, even unto Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, brought bread on asses. So we're going to be had bread. And on camels and on mules. That's how much bread they're, they're bringing all the, the bread on asses, camels, and mules. That's a lot of bread. And yet Jesus took 12 loaves and fed over 5,000 people. He'll have an entire nation of Israel to feed like he did in the wilderness. The manna, which Jesus said in John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. The water of life that came out of that rock that he told that woman in John chapter 4, I am the water of life. He's going to refeed Israel, but not in the wilderness. In their homeland that the United Nations, the Arabians and Ishmaelites don't like. Cake, uh, no wait a minute, meals and, and on oxen and meat. Oh, we're going to eat meat. Feel sorry for the vegetarians. Meal. And that's like ground up uh, corn and oh, uh, cakes of figs, Ooh. bunches of raisins, and wine, and oil, and oxen. Oxen are going to carry, carry this stuff, and we're going to have oxen for food, and sheep abundantly. 
Oh, sheep. He's a, over the sheep, John chapter 10. For there was joy in Israel. And what's the only real joy that Israel is going to have? When Jesus Christ sits on that throne of David and begins his reign, and that reign will never end. There it goes. 